yeah, right. So I'm gonna start. Hello, <laughs> anybody out there? <laughs> Hopefully. <laughs> Hopefully. So I would like to uh, start my presentation or would you like to say something about me or the company or whatever? Um, mm. Maybe um, Oscar will say a yes. short introduction about Thomas and then uh, I will also uh, welcome the participants and then the floor is yours, Thomas. <laughs> Perfect. Okay. Uh, yes, uh, then first, uh, hello to everybody to the webinar today. Um, the webinar will be done by Thomas Weiler. He is one of our German uh, key opinion leaders for Agepti and uh, Tribos. Also, thank you very much for Katrin from uh, Dental Marketing. She is our sales representative. So if you, want, uh, if you have any technical questions, just um, ask Tom, uh, Thomas Weiler. And later for sales, also Katrin. We will be here the whole webinar. So if you have any questions, you can see in this gray box you have on the, your right or left side from the window. You can write every time questions inside. You can also use the chat, no problem. Uh, and at the end, we make a, a 50 minutes uh, QA. So you can, if you have bigger questions, wait till the end. If you have small questions, they're directly to this topic. You can also directly type your questions in. So I give the word now to Thomas and uh, Katrin and wish you a wise webinar. Thank you very much. Thank you, Oscar. <laughs> so Katrin, do you want to say something before I start? Uh, I will say just um, hello to my customers in our own languages, if you don't mind. <laughs> oh, Tere minu poolt kõigile, aitäh, kes te tulite kuulema, et Thomas Weileri webinaari täna ja äh, Oskar siis ütles äh, alguses sisse juhatuses, et kõigil, kellel on küsimusi, et äh, kirjutage need sinna küsimust äh, osasse ja siis äh, webinaari lõpus loeme need küsimused ette, vastame kõikidele küsimustele, et minu poolt kõikidele äh, põnevat jälgimist ja siis äh, järgmise webiseminaarini. Всем привет! Кто на русском говорит лучше из Латвии, может быть. Спасибо всем, которые регистрировали на наш вебинар. Вы можете оставить ваши вопросы на question box, и после лекции мы будем все ответить. И желаю вас хорошего вебинара. Um, я закрываю свою uh, вебкам, и uh, я буду здесь, если кто-то есть вопросы, кто не может uh, на английском, я могу эти переводить и uh, спросить uh, на лектора. Я кайкиле эсти келеска, эт кес, uh, келел он кюзимуси, и куйте английский келес и юльке кюзита, эт сис, тэ вэйте кирюту тэ эсти келес, и ма тэлгин нэт кюзимус, эт сис, луэн кулюпу сара. Aga soovin kõigile head vaatamist, kuulemist ja siis ma panen hetkel oma kaamera kinni, et Toomas siis jääb üksinda siia nähtavale teile, aga ma olen täiesti olemas. So, now we can yes, start. The floor is yours. Yes, I'm stopped my yeah. camera now. Yeah, okay. So, uh, welcome everybody. Uh, I would like to start uh, the presentation. Just a second. And here we go. So that's what it's all about. Yeah, that's the little pearl of wisdom. Simplicity is the key to brilliance. So what does that mean? It means we have to um, yeah, be very conscious. We have to be very um, awareness. We have to, to learn everything about nature, uh, learn everything about beauty. Um, it's uh, always a challenge to copy the nature um, because um, sometimes we have we got our own illusion about beauty, but um, sometimes we fail. And it's the question: Why do we fail? We fail because some, sometimes we're going to learn too quick. Um, I'm a personal martial artist. 
I am um, doing Taekwondo and Wing Chun, it's a Chinese Kung Fu. And um, yeah, the meaning of Kung Fu is very interesting, which means learning due to hard work. So um, if I would like to make a comparison to our job, to our dental practice, yes, I see um, our dental um, practice is also like Kung Fu. We need to learn to hard work. So um, we need to train it. We need to train our point of view. We need to train our skills. We need to train uh, our eyes. And um, it's just like um, Bruce Lee said, uh, as you can see, 10,000 kicks. Um, he feel the man who has practiced one kick 10,000 times. And I would like to say, if we would be able to uh, practice 10,000 dentures, yes, we, we know how it works, but it's just the same denture. So we will be, become better and better and better when we train every single step. So what is it all about? Right now, um, I'm trying to, to tell something about handcrafted harmony. What does that mean? Um, for uh, our daily work, is it also important to know how should I work with the bite rims um, or what is a duplicated current denture? It's a perfect tool and I would uh, like to show uh, it to you. Then I'm going to use the Trebos 501 teeth, artificial teeth, and they are for my opinion, close to nature. And that's very important uh, to get a, a pretty cool uh, setup concept. And that, of course, the function as well. And I call it like that, the power of the gum or of the gingiva um, has a huge impact on the appearance of, an, uh, of a denture. So let's start. You see, uh, yeah, aesthetic, what does it mean for me? Aesthetic is a big feeling. It's not based on length or width. It's a feeling about how do dentures look like. So what do you actually feel if you take a closer look to that? Do you feel it's perfect done? Do you feel it's, mm, it's pretty? It's beauty? Of course you can chew, of course you can smile, but it looks so artificial. And is it depending on the teeth? Maybe, but I guess it's the skills he don't had. So that's what I have done. Mm, of course, I used the uh, um, three boss teeth and I changed them a little bit with grinding. There's a little composite here and there to create a more natural appearance. But the base is the three boss teeth and take a closer look to the uh, gum. There's a huge impact of the form of the shape of every single tooth. So yeah, we need to copy the gum as well. So you see some examples. On the left side, you see yeah, a reconstruction, a restoration hmm, made of, of what? Is this, is this pretty cool? Mm, I don't think so. But you see the gum is looking very unnatural and it's depending on the color and it's depending on the shape of the, of the neck area by, uh, of every single teeth. So we need to create uh, a little uh, unsymmetric appearance and that's what nature does. Also here you see those little reddish uh, fiber inside the, um, the acrylic. I have never seen that in, in nature. So why do they use it? Um, maybe he like it well, but the shape of the teeth is not that good. The gum as well. So yeah, a lot of, a lot of things to do to change. And I'm feeling just inspired by nature. So I'm gonna try to copy the nature and I need the inspiration, of course, from, uh, of nature teeth. Even here, yeah. What should I say? I don't like it on the left side. I don't like it at all. It's a, I guess it's better appearance on the, on the right side. And if you take a closer look, let's say here, all the teeth, this one here 
is turned a little bit more to the outside. This one is a little bit turned to the inside. Um, the gum has here in that area a higher point than on the mesial part. See that? And these here are all round in the same way. I like to, to call it uh, the McDonald's bow. You know what I mean? This is, uh, yeah, this is no natural appearance. And take a closer look to the highest point of um, yeah, that artificial uh, gingiva. It's always on the same level and don't look natural. We need to create different lengths, different types of um, the length. Then we are going to create more uh, natural appearance. So, and that's my personal um, motivation. I'm looking at natural teeth. And so I'm going to um, copy the width, the length, the part of the gum, and, and, and. There's so much to learn. And when I'm chosen a uh, special, uh, special form, I'm trying to copy this form with the tree boss teeth. So here you see. Um, molar, the first molar from the original man two million years ago. Now you see the uh, up-to-date first molar and you see the um, solution of tribos. And I, I can see there is a lot of volume, a lot of uh, occlusal um, surface just like the nature does. And that's the reason why it will work. But what is it? Um, what's what kind of setup styles do we choose, or do I choose? It is um, it depends on um, the case. Uh, it depends on do I have an implant bar or just uh, full dentures. So um, I can choose from different concepts uh, for uh, an individual case, and I will gonna choose um, for today. Um, the full uh, balanced occlusion. You see, here are uh, anatomical natural occlusion, which means there the uh, guidance of the canine, and that's for uh, full dentures um, difficult to to do because uh, all the dentures will get uh, whipping on on to the on the rim. So we need at least a lingualized occlusion or even better, a fully balanced occlusion. And that's what we can do with the uh, Tribos uh, molars. Um, what we have to know is how, how does it work uh, inside the mouth? Um, what do uh, we have for, for a rim? What do we have for uh, a gum? And by the way, what do we have with the uh, um, condola joints? Do we have a flat? Uh, condola uh, inclination, or do we have a, yeah, just like younger uh, uh, men? So, if you got a primary morphology, we can use the, the left one here, and you can also see the cusp very uh, rich, very steep here, and you got a tree tree podization, and you see here it is a little bit more flat, and even by this one, you can see it's even flatter. Here. So uh, this means uh, we got more contacts for a fully balanced occlusion. And um, yeah, I don't want to make it too scientific, but we need little uh, knowledge about our function. And you can see here or joint, if this condola path is more flattened, we need to flatten our occlusal surface. And this is, uh, can be seen here. The larger an ISS, an immediate side shift, actually is, the more flat must be the cusp and the ridges. This is meant to be a very flat cusp. So we can uh, solve this problem with the Trebos teeth. And here, um, a case from uh, my daily work. As of course, it's not a full denture, but we can see function. Um, I've chosen a full adjustable articulator to um, manage um, the inclination. Um, this was uh, mounted with a face bow and um, this is the path 
I can um, control, which means I have seen a lot of um, abrasive surfaces onto the molars. And this was only, uh, I could only get those contacts with this inclination of zero, um, yeah, zero uh, point. So I need to change this inclination. If I won't do it, maybe 40 degrees, uh, you see there's absolutely no contact here. On this side, even more with 60 degrees, we can see there's absolutely no contact. We can work like that, but this is not the truth. The truth is here on this side. And so it is important to look on the function, on the surface, what is the patient able to do with, um, yeah, with the movements. So for our daily work, for full dentures, we start, of course, with the impression. That's a part of the dental practitioner. And I hope uh, so uh, <laughs> he will do his work well. Um, then the second one is a bite plate. We can use uh, wax rims. And uh, first of all, we need to know that um, the, the uh, space for the tongue, the comfort zone for the patients, which means he will be able to uh, to make this phonetic sounds for the aesthetic, for the function. That's the zone we need to, um, yeah, we need to create and he will be able to talk with the bite plate. That's very, very important. Most of the people are using um, those uh, uh, bite rims, wax, made of wax. That's okay, that's pretty cool, but the shape must be um, individual. You can see here, even on the right side, this part here is very important to know the support of the uh, upper lip and the support for the lower lip. And this is absolutely necessary to know where's the campus plane. That's uh, necessary for the function. And then we're going to start our um, uh, model analysis, N and N. There's a lot of things to do. And for me, important, uh, the patient must be able to talk with the bite plate. If he isn't able to talk, we need to correct this. And then I will know how much space do I have for uh, the uh, inside area. Also important for me to, to get perfect results is the uh, facial analysis. Um, almost to 100%, I'm going to see all the patients. And I'm gonna make some pictures, portraits, and then I can uh, analyze the situation of um, the artificial teeth. This is the uh, beginning, and he got also a full denture. Yeah, and for me, I, yeah, I don't like it. And he even, he, uh, didn't like it at all because it was too much teeth to see. To see, so we need to correct this. This is a final um, full denture, and you can see there is a lot of different happened here. You see the uh, Campbell plane was a lift up, and you see also now uh, the lower jaw a little bit more, and the width of the teeth is much better. I'm just drawing some lines inside the portraits just to get a better feeling about what, what I need to do. It's the width of the teeth was here incorrect. It's here much better. And you see uh, it starts on the inside with the eye angle to, up to the nose. Then you can see the position of the canine. Even here the same, but you see the canine is on a, a false uh, position, even here. And uh, what's very important to me is a smile line. And the smile line um, depends on the symmetric, almost symmetric, but let's say more harmonious way uh, to the uh, incisal edges. You see here, the uh, distance is also in the shape of the lower lip and here not. It's a straight, almost a straight line from canine, the pointed part of the canine 
to the incisal edge is almost a straight line, but here not. Here is following by the lower lip. That's the reason why it looks much better. And that's also important to know. If you don't get a picture of the patient, it's very, very hard to get a perfect result. Also, again, uh, analysis from the old dentures. And yeah, let's say it's not that bad, but you can see the uh, incisal edges are too roundish. Don't, doesn't look like an old man. Looks like, yeah, something artificial. And now I believe this is a better way to create, um, yeah, an individual uh, denture. And also here you can see I use also a little uh, artificial uh, resin with those reddish fibers inside. I mean, I don't like that uh, uh, resin anymore because it looks unnatural. I can show you uh, later that solution. So now we have learned um, the wax rims, the bite for the bite plate is good, but it's not that, um, yeah, what should I say? It's uh, not much information in, in it. And mostly the patient is not able to talk. So I'm gonna choose another way or just an alternate way. Um, I'm going to duplicate the current denture, which means um, the patient will be able to talk and I will see what is good and even more important, what is bad on that uh, old denture. And I'm going to um, apply that uh, silicon matrix onto the uh, base side of the denture uh, than the upper side. So I will be able to fill um, the, uh, the space with a new um, acrylic. This is actually my base plate, including teeth, including the old height, including all the wrong positions or even the positions that are not that bad. So I can create uh, yeah, a, a better feeling while we are um, going to, to, to manage all the new situation, which means um, we are able to do here an impression. This is also the impression tray. And at the same time, we can use it as a bite rim. And that's a huge uh, advantage. Also here for um, the case I'm going to show you, I did a duplication and with the duplication was made an um, impression. I mounted it and then I see this and now I can say, okay, let's, let's make a comparison to the portraits, to the photos of the patient. Now I will see, okay, is the position of the teeth wrong or is it good or is the campus plane maybe a little bit too uh, to uh, to the down to the downside, or is it on this side maybe to uh, to the upper side? Is there something wrong? So I can do everything with here. I'm gonna go in uh, to to make the analysis with the model, and after that, I'm going to create um, a new uh, a plate for the setup. You can see here some lines. This is the highest point of uh, the ridge. And now I know here in this area, here I will be able to uh, create a stable um, occlusion just in this area here, not here or even wider to the outside. It's just in this area. Mm, to get a really good uh, analysis. We need to talk at least for four hours for every single patient. What we need to know, the highest point of the, of the bone of the, uh, of the ridge is a stable, a stable position for the teeth.
in this case, I always start with a, um, with an interior area because this is the most um, important part for the aesthetic. After uh, the setup from the uh, upper jaw, then I'm going to uh, create the lower jaw. And now again, we got that duplicated uh, denture and I can even put it inside. It can control now um, if the um, length better or even worse. So I have to um, concentrate myself just on the on the left side, just for the upper jaw. And I can say, okay, is the midline good or is it worthwhile to correct it? You can see here, I corrected it a little bit. And I can uh, say, okay, is the smile line okay or uh, the lines are maybe too long and I need to shorten it a little bit. That's all the aesthetic part. We, uh, I want to um, save it here right now. And now we got here uh, the tunnel wax from uh, Gipdi. And I really, really love this wax because it is so easy to use. Um, the artificial teeth are tunneled right now here. And it's almost the same, uh, the same size with a tunnel. And I can uh, squeeze, it a, squeeze a little bit, so I get a little bit smaller. And when I apply those teeth, um, it, it will hold the position. It, it won't change if you put another teeth uh, directly in the, uh, on, on the same uh, position. It won't change the shape. It is absolutely easy to use. So you can here see some um, functional lines and uh, you see here the uh, black one is the main part. It's crossing here, the deepest point of, of the, uh, of the uh, bone. And this is the part I want to get uh, contact, this area here. And it's also allowed, this area here, to get even here contact. But in this area, I don't want to get too much or even yeah, too hard um, occlusal contact. It's just in the inside of the occlusal surface. That's how, uh, how I start. And now I've applied the uh, upper jaw and I've seen, oh my God, the fit is not good. But why? It is because of the position of the uh, canines or let's say the whole setup of uh, the anterior teeth. If the bow is too, too big, uh, I will get loose space in this area here, which means the contact isn't good. So what should I uh, change now? What I have to change? Should I change my um, aesthetic in the uh, anterior area? No. There's such an easy way to solve it. So if you take a closer look here in that area and even here, you see it's just a small contact and even here and here. So I don't want to grind the occlusal surface because the occlusal surface is perfect. For every setup, the occlusal surface is perfect. But I don't got at any time a perfect situation. So I need to grind again, not the occlusal surface, but the approximate area here. I'm going to grind this area off. So all the teeth will, um, will get together and then after the full setup, I got my perfect occlusal contacts. It's very, very easy. And uh, yeah, so that's the reason why I like to work with the tree boss teeth. Yeah, then uh, the wax, you can use different waxes. You can uh, use um, different styles with your setup, with your modeling gingiva. Um, I like this tippling action, but yeah, not that much. And 
of course not over the whole surface. The stippling part is just between the roots a little bit, just a little bit here in that area or even here, but not the whole surface is stippled. You see here the margin area, this is absolutely soft. There's no stippling that I'm going to create with a little brush and then I'm going to, uh, to soften it a little bit. Yeah, that's, and again, you can see there's nothing symmetric. This part here is a little bit deeper. This is a little bit higher. Um, the position of the papilla here is even higher to the incisal edges. There's a little, little bit smaller. And again, this area too. And now a little uh, little secret. If we got a smile line here, you see that bow? The height of the papilla follows this bow. And then we have a natural appearance. Is it always uh, important to create those, uh, yeah, oh, I forgot the English word, damn it. <laughs> Um, is it important? Of course not. It is important, but the yeah, natural appearance looks much better. And how can we create those um, effects? We can use um, colored waxes. Um, it's called new cherry or ruby. Um, so we can train those areas um, where we can apply color. Um, I like this because um, I have a perfect idea, what should I do for uh, the acrylic uh, denture? Which means, um, do I really need such a um, dark color or do I need a little bit uh, yeah, lighter? So um, that can, uh, that's possible to, um, to check with the wax. And give, give us, uh, Gepti Dental, sorry, Gepti Dental uh, got different waxes. So um, for the base plate, you can see on the left side, um, it's pretty soft and it become harder on the right side. Uh, I like to work personal one with Trivos M and uh, you can also use uh, Trivos uh, H just for an example for uh, the, uh, the plate, base plate, if you like to work it with. And uh, you can see here, here an example with wax on uh, the left side. Um, here are different waxes used. And of course, a little bit stippling here and between the roots, you can see here. But you need also soft areas. And that's a case, a special case I'm going to show you uh, later. Um, yeah, with a little combination of um, build up technique with composite and paint on technique. It's always the same. Take a look at the Gingiva position. This teases turn around here. You can see here the Muku Gingiva area is much darker than. The side here, different length of the gingiva. Yeah, that's important because nature isn't symmetric at all. Here, very special. I did this work uh, years ago and uh, on the left side you can see uh, directly after finishing um, the full denture and but the patient wasn't happy. And I was uh, thinking about, oh my God, what is she talking about? We, we made a proof, we checked it. And uh, yeah, she was telling me, no, the teeth are looking too small, which means not the width, because she was thinking about the length. They are looking too squarish. And yes, after she told me that, she was right. Okay, what should I do? Is the whole denture new? No. Or even the new setup? No. Just to correct the gingiva. It's the same case. You see here that area, I changed it from this roundish to the length part. Even here, I made it in a different way. And it's definitely the same teeth. So it looks totally different. And that's 
the reason why I think our gum has a huge impact on the full dentures. And uh, we need to pay attention to the gum. This is quite interesting. It's, you can see uh, four uh, setups and it's always the same teeth, the same setup, the same angle. And you see, it looks totally different. So we are able to change the shape of a single teeth with a gum. You can look at, make it look like a square. We can look like a triangle or can even look roundish or a combination of all of it. And what's the best one? It depends on the case. You see it in, in the face, you can say, okay, this man or woman needs roundish teeth or square teeth. So you can use uh, very good artificial teeth, just like Tribos, and you can change the shape with the gum. That's very necessary and important to know. Then we need the skills yeah, to do it. So again, we need to learn all of, all of the beautiness of the gum. On the left side, you see um, the upper jaw is wax, lower jaw is uh, already done in uh, acrylic. And I did a combination with uh, paint on technique and build up technique. And the rest of it is just yeah, the pure form of the tribos teeth. There will no nothing change, even grind as a surface, nothing. This is the pure truth. How can we manage it? Yeah, this is totally simple. I use those different uh, parts. You can use composite. Um, I'm going to use some uh, light on uh, material and then I'm going to cover it. Remember the uh, first cases you've seen? Um, there you can see this is the result of a combination of uh, build up and paint on. Then I will be able to create a perfect match with a yeah, natural gum. And it starts here on the left side, here. That's the pure truth of a yeah, little bit boring acrylic. It looks like, a, yeah, not lifeless, you know what I mean? It's not filled up with life. So I'm going to apply a little bit color. And then I'm going to cover it. Maybe again, a little bit cover with uh, uh, paint on. And then I'm going to cover it with a composite. And then I'm sure the paint will still be there. Uh, he can brush the denture, he can clean it, whatever, and the paint will be on uh, inside the composite and we got a really really good effect of uh, natural um, denture. If you got no composites or if you got no time um, you can use of course just the paint on technique and you need to cover it with um, optiglaze by for, uh, <laughs> for example. Um, this will cover your paint, paint and will um, make a make it a little bit yeah safer for the brushes for uh, the food and 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 so uh, the paint will be covered by uh, a little uh, little lack. Okay, almost done. Some examples with uh, three boss teeth, even for uh, implant bars. Um, what I really like about these teeth is the volume of the teeth because I, I'm now able to hide all the structures of an implant, of a telescopic part or uh, locators or whatever I'm going to use to, to, to uh, make those uh, bars. Um, I am able to hide all the structure without losing the anatomical uh, part. And um, if I take a closer look to this beautiful teeth here, this is absolutely not composite. This is the teeth from uh, Tribos. Absolutely lovely halo. 
and uh, inside you can see those uh, let's say mamelongs and you can see uh, a little um, uh, color uh, yeah, how should I say you can see different colors inside the teeth and that's what nature does so uh, it looks very very natural and then we can play a little bit with the position of the teeth. We can uh, turn them a little bit around. We can um, go uh, to, to the approximate area and you see there are no black triangles. Um, you can fill it up a little bit with, with color to uh, create a natural appearance. And uh, so you can see here on, on this side, it's everything is hidden inside the denture. And there's nothing to see. those um, individual setup is just possible um, with the patient. We need to talk to him, we need to show him, we need to explain it and um, after a while he, he will say yes that's what I wanted to see. It's also possible that you uh, got a picture from maybe from, from the time he was a young young man and I have seen this teeth uh, was uh, turned around. So I asked him, okay, should I do this again? And he told me, yes, I just wanted to get it back. Yes, when you see here, different length of the teeth. And imagine here, this uh, single teeth looks shorter, but the gingiva is even the same length, which means this length here and here, and here and here is the same. But you see, here is a deeper, and that's the reason why it looks better, not on the same level. If you're going to, to create a gingiva always on the same level, it looks unnatural. Even here, the position of the alveolar ridge, you see that a little bit more to the outside than here, because this teeth is uh, positioned more to the inside, this more to the outside. So that's even here a different in the gingiva. Yeah, and again, close up for the incisal edges, close up for the halo effect. Absolutely brilliant. You see the full dentures again. Yeah, and on the left side, the beginning, on the right side, the result. So, uh, yeah, and here, uh, a little advertise. Uh, I've written some books, and uh, if you feel uh, interest, you can order them. Okay, our common goal, handcrafted harmony. I guess that's the reason why we did this. So I hope you enjoyed that webinar. Uh, I'm finished right now. So if you uh, got some questions, do it right now. Perfect. Thank so, you, Thomas. Thomas. That was amazing. Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you very much. Really liked it. Really nice uh, lecture. Um, Thank you very for much. the moment, I don't see any questions. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Seems to blow away all the people. <laughs> okay. Or maybe, okay. Or maybe they need some minutes for uh, typing now. <laughs> maybe wait one one two minutes. <laughs> yes. That's uh, no, no problem. Absolutely no problem. I know it's um. Yeah, sometimes it looks so easy um, on the screen, but actually it is really hard work. And sometimes, uh, yeah, you fail, sometimes you win. That's, yeah, that's life. But I think you have uh, practiced a lot because this looks really natural and really, really, really Thank beautiful. You. Also in the parts and wow, really. Thank you very much. Do you, um, I have a question, do you always use the um, aesthetic like um, build on or you sometimes use also the acrylics that you will just make it like um, with the powders already in the cuvette? Yes, that's a different question? part. I, I tried it, I tried it in uh, 
to to yeah to 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 use this powder technique inside the cuvette but uh, to be honest i failed so much time <laughs> and i was really 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 disappointed about that uh, technique um, so i tried to to solve the problem in uh, yeah with the paint on technique and to to cover it with a little composite onto uh -huh. the paint and um yeah, I got all the time uh, the control of color. Mm -hmm. And uh, if I'm going to use a powder technique, yeah, I imagine this could be the right place for a little lighter uh, acrylic or a little bit darker, but I have no control about it. Mm -hmm. And that's the reason why I stopped it for me. <laughs> and uh, yes, I'm, I just used uh, the paint on technique and build up. It's for yeah. me. It's, it's uh, quicker, let's say, like that. <laughs> you didn't do the one ten thousand uh, uh, kicks for this. <laughs> yes, mm, not not ten thousand, but almost, <laughs> but <I> almost failed. <laughs> okay. Yeah. okay. There is I one question it's, it's from me. Oh yes, I see one question. So I'm going to. Uh, oh, does it work? uh thank you for your webinar do you always use composite or acrylic both <laughs> from time to time i use more composite or acrylic it's uh, depends on the on, on the case uh, for example um how high is a smile line or a, a gummy smile if you got a patient with a gummy smile i always use a composite because it's uh, more natural for me just to 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 make uh, yeah uh, a correct appearance of the gum it's more easier for me so should i uh, uh oscar soll ich das eingeben die antwort oder no, no, I think, and, yeah no i already get you guys so i will mark it as Okay, yes. Okay. Okay, no problem. Brilliant. Mm -hmm. I think this was the same question, really, what I had. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. But um, have you seen any uh, good results with the acrylics or uh, it's just your personal preference? Now, I've, I've seen a lot of very brilliant uh, results with acrylic, uh, but I can't do it. I'm not good enough. <laughs> Oh, yeah, that's the truth. That's the truth. And Elena, Elena is asking uh, further at which is uh, better for the long term. Yeah, definitely the uh, composite. But you need to to um, polish it very uh, brilliant, and maybe for some little parts you can use um, uh, the, uh, the glaze technique, just to 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 uh, finish. The approximate area because you can't polish uh, the area around the papilla and you need to to get a smooth uh, clean surface and that's the reason why i'm going to use um, that optiglaze from gc by the way but for the long term uh, appearance is composite much better because it's more homo homogeneous mm -hmm. it's more tight yeah let's say it like that I hope it's uh, good enough. <laughs> yes. It's always about the um, uh, technician who is doing the um, work. Yeah, 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 absolutely. And um, for a brilliant result, you need time. You need time. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> A lot of practice but, and a lot of time. Yeah. By the way, uh, maybe it's an uh, interesting point. Um, I know most most of the uh, advisors don't say how much time it takes to uh, fulfill the, the denture, to, to fulfill this destiny. Uh, I need one day just to finish the denture. One day with paint on, with composite, with polishing uh, part, the whole day. And then I know, okay, I'm done. <laughs> mm -hmm. And I know a lot of people out there uh, making 
five, four, uh, ten dentures a day. I can't do it. I need just really one day to finish it. And that's maybe a, a important to know. If you want mm -hmm. to, to make it in, uh, in a perfect way, you need time, time, time. And again, time. <laughs> Of course, when you have a good skills in the prosthetics, you you need to know your worth, and um, and if the result has to be perfect, then it's not yeah. possible to be really fast because then you get no. stressed, then you start to make mistakes, and then yeah. you need to redo it, and uh, then you lose time even more than yeah. it is essential for the work. If you if you think about um, the acrylic. Um, the company say you, you need 30 or 20 to 30 minutes inside the pressure pot mm -hmm. to, 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 to harden it. Um, I know that every single <laughs> dental technician has not that time. So what will happen to the acrylic if you don't go into the, the full way of, of, of harden, harden time, uh, which means if you use just 10 minutes, what will happen to the rest liquid inside the acrylic? It's not, uh, yeah, it's not getting getting hard enough. So there there will be a rest inside the acrylic, and this will um, leads to um, uh, allergy. Say how you say it in, in, allergies. 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 Mm -hmm. allergies. That's simple. Yeah. Um, so if if you uh, got time use it and let's uh, denture stay in the, in the pressure pot and yeah take some rest or something else we need time that's the most uh, important secret i don't see any further questions uh, but i must say it is really interesting uh, to talk to you about these things and oh, i'm thank you <laughs> I'm, I'm personally really impressed about the works and about uh, the beauty of the of the dentures what you have created you. And, uh, this is such a good knowledge uh, about the gingiva and how you can change the appearance of the teeth with the gingiva by changing the yeah. gingiva and even how yeah. you change the arch of the gingiva and I, I think this is really uh, good uh, information for all our participants mm -hmm. as well and give them a lot of courage and um, and confidence uh, to 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 do these works and uh, to find some uh, better tips and tricks for the yeah. um, for the more aesthetic work uh, for their uh, yeah. patients and uh, also for the quality Mm -hmm. uh, Absolutely. Writing, writing the three positive are the best. Yay! Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Elena is one of Absolutely. our longest, longest yeah. customers for the three positive. Yeah. So thank you, Elena, yeah. for your <laughs> <laughs> advertisement. Yeah. Really yeah. If you, for you. If, you, if you want to to uh, to make a really uh, full setup in that natural individual way. Uh, everyone got a, a, a personal um, taste of, of aesthetic, and um, sometimes it's it's easy if you if you got a natural uh, plaster model, you can easily copy it. But if you don't got nothing, you you have to 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 use your own experience about the setup. Then you can say, okay, this guy or this woman needs. Uh, triangle teeth or square teeth you have to see it inside the face what you know what i mean you can't work anonymous just with a model i tried it but it's yeah I, and i failed i need to see the patient i need to to hear him because the position of every single teeth got a huge impact on the phonetic and um Often, often when I take a closer look to, to uh, celebrities or uh, even a news talker in, in the TV, and they got new teeth, you can hear it because uh, it sounds awful. They look much brighter, the teeth, yes, maybe a little bit straighter, okay. 
uh, question of a personal taste, right? But mm. you can hear it. Mm. That's the reason why I'm thinking about, mm, okay, we need to talk with the patient while the setup, while we are going to, to create a, a perfect result. And if, if you don't do it, mm, it's, yeah, it's difficult to handle. Absolutely. I totally agree. It's the hardest work is the full dangers. It's really yeah. creating from zero. Meanwhile, you need to pay attention for so many different things and you need to be yeah. so good at the, yeah. at the function. And if something goes wrong, then you have to redo it. And that's what nobody wants to do. Yeah, right. Sometimes I'm I'm a little bit shocked if I'm looking in, in that empty space inside the articulator. I'm thinking, oh my God, I need to fill up this empty space with tea. <laughs> I need to put something there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, right. yeah, perfect. I think it was a really nice webinar. Thank you. Um, I think in the next, uh, today or maybe tomorrow, next few days, uh, we'll also send some certificates to all uh, the people that was yeah. here. Uh, from, from from my side, I also have to say uh, thank you to Katrin for uh, set up uh, this webinar. I know this is not uh, always easy, <laughs> so thank you very much, Katrin, from uh, this side, and also uh, to Thomas. Uh, thank you very much for this uh, webinar. It was a really ni nice one. I really appreciate this. Thank you very much. So, yeah. <laughs> thank you very much. And I think we will have a talk in the next hours. <laughs> Yeah. Thank you for Thomas. Thank you for Oscar. I really, really enjoyed it. I'm so happy that we had um, quite a lot of people registered and um, we will have the recording in the next few days and everybody who didn't participate can see it as a recording. And uh, I really hope to see you both soon again in the yeah. webinar. <laughs> <Of course. laughs> and um, I will also thank um, all our participants suurelt tähkritidele kes osalesid ma loodan et teile meeldis see sama palju kui see mulle meeldis sest mulle väga meeldis uh, spasiba всем kto uh, smatreli ja slusheli ja ja очень надеюсь to вам тоже понравилось как это понравилось мне uh, всем хорошего дня спасибо и до следующий раз Kõikidele suureid täh ja täna ja kohtumise nii järgmisel korral. So thank you and see you soon. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.